I'll just keep saying about the mobile phones. I'm going to get so sick of this by the end of the week. But uh, yeah, turn them off if you've got them. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our next guest. Um, he is talking today on the paradox of commercially viable free open source software. Um, he's from Toowoomba. He works on it with Joomla, I believe. Um, Andrew Eddy. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so my name's Andrew Eddy. Um, my involvement in open source software started in about 2002, uh, and I uh, entered into uh, what was then the world of Mambo and then in, t in 2003 and uh, Joomla thereafter and that's a very interesting story but one for another time. Um, my, uh, why I'm here today is to share a little bit of the journey that we had a number of years ago in 2007. We had what uh, we on the inside call the GPL wars uh, where we um, uh, Joomla was always GPL but we decided to uh, actively Mm, shall we say promote, some would say enforce, uh, the GPL a little bit strongly. And uh, uh, things that uh, you were able to add on to Joomla, we uh, made sure or we, we brought in rules where if you were using uh, Joomla resources, you could only um, uh, use those resources if your thing, widget, uh, template, extension uh, complied with the main Joomla license and that uh, caused a little bit of a furor and a few people um, uh, left our community because of that and I'll tell you why they came back uh, in a little while. Now this being a Linux conference uh, this first set of um, uh, points is probably I'm preaching to the converted but I'll go over it um, uh, anyway, uh, we've got the, uh, and you're all obviously here and not scared away by the previous session that about Trade Practices Act and horrible things that you are in business, but this is about how you actually make a buck when you give away the software for free, which is a question I often get. Um, so there's the idea of the license versus the source. Uh, license and licenses uh, can be, um, licenses are about how you use uh, the source code. Uh, how you use a product and the source may or may not be included. Uh, you can get freeware without source, you can get uh, freeware with source, but um, there's not necessarily uh, any rights attached to that source, even when it is open source software. You may have no rights to redistribute it or anything like that. There's uh, projects uh, uh, on the web today that have um, are very liberal, uh, licensing with their source and others very uh, restrictive. Uh, there's also the notion of free versus freedom. Uh, free as in free beer and free as in, uh, sorry, uh, the open source is often said to be free but it's uh, usually said in the context of free as in free beer or free as in freedom. Now with most open source co software uh, we're talking uh, a little bit about both. Um, and generally there's a little bit of a, a pushback um, in open source worlds where you want to start selling, uh, selling open source software. Um, there's also the notion of copyleft versus copyright. Copyright's there to protect the rights of the author of the material, as we heard um, the previous session. Uh, and it, it gives you some rights about how you control people doing what they want to do with that software. And um, that may involve you, you're not permitting um, people to copy it, to redistribute, uh, or that sort of thing. Copy left doesn't replace copyright. You still hold uh, copyright, but what copy left does is uh, rather than uh, restrict uh, what you uh, can't do with uh, your work, uh, in our case software, uh, what it does is uh, require you to do certain things with the software um, in the cases usually when you distribute it. And that is, uh, I distribute to you, uh, providing you, when you distribute it on, you grant that person the same rights uh, all, all downstream. Finally, we have um, the idea of proprietary versus uh, the cost of enforcement. 
I can't remember the exact video, but I've certainly seen Eben Moglen uh, say things to the effect that the cost of enforcing um, licensing and, and trying to combat piracy uh, is about the same cost as your lost sales if you're, um, if you're, if you're not, not doing that. So it's really, there's no net benefit to uh, locking, this. there appears to be no net benefit uh, to locking down your software uh, and then going to fight the pirates, uh, per se. Um, uh, so in some ways, uh, open source uh, software, or free open source software, uh, alleviates this. Um, uh, there's also a, a running joke I have is, um, I, I used to um, sell commercial extensions, and uh, people would ask me for a demo. We didn't have demo, because then if you downloaded it, you could rightly keep it and not not have to pay us for it. Um, I just say, look, you can find the demos on the torrents. It's, it's quite OK. Uh, and I looked at them as free advertising. Um, the thing uh, with, with the torrents are uh, they're not lost customers at all because they never will be your customers. So um, uh, that's, that's the thing um, to sort of uh, balance out with all those other points. So the perceived bar barriers are to two uh, traditional licensing models, models the um, uh, proprietary software, these are the things that the Microsoft say you can't use open source for and, and that sort of thing. Um, in, in the proprietary systems, a lot of the time they're trying to obscure their, their they're pro trying to protect their IP um, by obscuring it, they're trying to protect their secret source. Um, and in, when you've got open source, all your secrets are, are laid bare uh, for the world to see. Um, However, if you do release under copyleft licenses, uh, there's a nice little tit for tat that happens. Um, somebody can download your software and then put up their own version of it, uh, possibly improved. Uh, because that's been re released under a copyleft license, uh, you can download that back and put those, um, those changes back into your own code, providing you, you manage um, the change log and that sort of thing. So. Um, People are very worried about others stealing their, their codes. Well, you can steal it right back, sort of. Um, there's no digital rights management in open source co software. Uh, no matter how well you try to obscure it, uh, there's always, somebody will find a way of, of switching it off. And particularly in um, uh, the PHP languages, it's, it's quite easy to get around uh, any, any DRM. That's a perceived barrier. Uh, Copyleft can be distributed for nothing. Uh, I sell a product for $100 under the GPL. Somebody can legitimately and ethically download that, uh, pay me $100, download it, and uh, put it up their own, on their own website for free. And there's nothing I can do to stop that. Now, the one point I have there is they're not really a businessman, because if it was me, I would be putting it up on my site and selling it for $95 to try and un undercut me. But hey. Um, but that's a, a, another uh, perceived barrier. And um, uh, lastly, uh, some copyright, uh, copyleft licenses, like the GPL, have a viral downstream effect. They don't like playing with um, non-copyleft uh, licenses. So if you download um, a, a full GPL package and try to integrate in, into your own software, uh, your own software has to be then distributed, and you then distribute it, you must... Um, distribute the whole package uh, under a copyleft uh, license. And that's how you, you, know, you hear these things where people are, are talking about the GPL infects everything or it's viral or, or that sort of thing. So those are uh, 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 some of the um, tired old things we hear a lot of the time uh, from the proprietary camp. So if you're involved in, so how do you make a buck? Uh, if you're involved in uh, GPL licensing uh, or other copyleft licenses, there's, uh, you've got to think a little bit differently. Um, and there's quite a, a range of uh, ways you can attack this. Uh, you can um, obviously do the fee for download. You've got, to re you've got to sign up, hand over your credit card number, and, and people download it. Uh, it's a very low ba ba barrier to entry, a very low capital cost uh, to do that sort of thing. Um, 
you do need to sort of worry about, okay, I've got their money once, how do I get it again? Uh, that's, that's a little bit hard. But, you know, at, at the base level for the hobbyist to move up into, I sort of want to start making a living out of this, the thief of download works very well. Um, then you move into uh, what is very common are subscription and service-based uh, models, where uh, you sign up for some sort of um, time period a plan, a monthly plan or a yearly plan, where you get the, sound, the source code, uh, you get the, um, um, your, your product, um, and uh, along with that you get forum support or ticket support or, uh, or what have you, some sort of value add to justify them shelling out that $50 a year or $10 a month or something, something to give them the incentive um, to come back. Um, one thing we've uh, done though in the, uh, the Joomla project in particular, and I believe this is done in other uh, similar projects, is uh, there's creative licensing, and that's creative in the sense of the creative arts. Uh, so particularly with our template market, um, we uh, allow a little, there's a little bit of a, a loophole um, with the GPL, the GPL only applies to, in our case, the PHP files, the executable files, the Joomla loads, and that sort of thing. Anything that happens on the browser is not particular, not necessarily protected by the GPL. So a template designer or a theme designer can very rightly have artistic copyright and artistic license on the, the graphical elements, on the um, CSS, on the JavaScript. and um, uh, what they can then do with that element is while the, the PHP or the executable or whatever language it's in, underlying must, com must be compatible with Joomla, um, they can do a per site license uh, on the actual design. And that was, um, uh, it was fortunate for a, a template industry. Um, and uh, un unfortunately, we can't do the same thing with extensions, but uh, that's, that's one, one loophole. Unfortunately, I'm graphically challenged, so I can't make a buck out of that sort of stuff. But uh, a lot of people, other people can. Um, okay, so that's a lot of the theory. So why does Joomla work? Why have they become uh, a popular? And uh, why did all of those, a lot of those developers that um, left the project um, uh, when we had the GPL wars come back? Uh, well, the simple answer is they weren't making any money, um, whereas they were before. Uh, one of the key points with Joomla is it's a known brand identity. If you uh, want to uh, go after the iPad and the Kindle um, with a new product, with a new a uh, piece of hardware, it's very difficult to crack into that market because it's, it's, uh, you, you a lot of, have a lot of money behind you to get, uh, to get into there. But if you want to put an app on an iPhone or an app on an Android or uh, any of the other, other advices, it's much easier to crack into that industry because um, what you're essentially doing is, if you can't be saying, is if you can't beat them, join them and um, you're piggybacking off the hard work of somebody else. Uh, it's very difficult to sort of be a newbie in the whole um, CMS space. I've got a, a brilliant widget, how do I get that out there? Uh, it's, it's much easier to piggyback off, off somebody else's popularity. Um, in, uh, in the Joomla universe, and it, it's, it's uh, the same in um, uh, Drupal's and WordPress's and, and that sort of thing, uh, the ex our extension directory is our, uh, the hub of the universe. And just like uh, iTunes is, a, is successful uh, for music and uh, Amazon for books, uh, why are they successful? Because everything's in the one place. I don't have to go to 60 different places to find what I want. Uh, and it's the same with the Joomla extension directory. It's a central repository uh, for people to find things. Uh, and that's a value add for why you would want to get involved um, with uh, producing commercial or even uh, non-commercial work. 
Uh, just to give you um, a few stats, why there is an incentive to be on these extensions directory, our, our extension directory has a, a midweek uh, mid peak of 100,000 vid visitors um, per day, 600,000 page, page views, um, uh, average seven to eight minutes on site, 40% bounce rate, and 60% of people are return visitors. Um, you're not going to get that on your own site that you launched last night in a big hurry. Actually, you're not going to get that at all without uh, an amazing, an amazing product. Uh, even the Facebooks took a while to get to that. Now, Facebook's way uh, huger than the, the new Joomla project, but you, you get what I mean. Um, we've also recognised, uh, I spoke before about uh, you can download the, uh, something uh, and then somebody else can, and can upload it again. Uh, we've recognised that and uh, what we've done to support our, particular, our commercial and our non-commercial people um, is have a forking fair go policy. And what that means is if we see people pulling down your code and putting it up on our directory the next day and it's essentially the same thing, uh, we're not going to let that happen. Um, even though ethically it's okay and it complies with the GPL, uh, we don't think that's playing nice and we don't want that sort of attitude in our community. So there's a three month grace period. Um, you can certainly have a go at abandoned projects and, and that sort of thing. Um, but th there's, a, there's a grace period there and um, if you do better than the guy that uh, you forked off, um, yeah, that didn't come out too well. Uh, but uh, uh, if you do better, then the other guy's just going to have to um, uh, improve his game. Um, uh, but uh, in contrast, he can also pull down the, the improvements that you made and uh, put it in his own product. Uh, influence of better ris listings, uh, ratings are a... Um, uh, we have on, on the directory heavily influence... Um, uh, basically site traffic, if you've got a high rating, just like the uh, people go nuts when they're, they're, if Apple does something and, and their ratings drop on the iPhone or the App Store, uh, so we've got the same problem here, or similar thing here. Um, ratings mean a lot and, me and basically mean a lot of traffic, which in a commercial, um, for a commercial developer, that turns into sales or conversions. Um, and also with looking at something like uh, uh, Joomla and the others, uh, you've got a flexible framework that requires customization. You're not locked in, you're, we're not dealing with something that is, is a one hit wonder, it only does one thing. Um, there's a massive uh, industry uh, around um, uh, these CMSs for, for people requiring customization. Um, and you can charge for that and, and charge for that well. Culturally, uh, there's also a few differences um, with Joomla that, that make this work. Uh, people like cheeseburgers. Uh, that's in the sense of they like uh, things that are inexpensive or, uh, or vol uh, things that can be sold at volume cheaply. Um, on the App Store, the, what's the price point? $1.19? Uh, after about a $2, you start thinking about whether this app is worth, or the Android Store worth downloading. Um, the, the, in the Joomla universe, 50 bucks is about the sweet spot. Um, and you know, you can sell a few, few things um, like that. Joomla also has a, a commodity-based culture. Um, Uh, people like just installing things and having them just work. Uh, while there's certainly a place for the Meccano set type of um, uh, uh, consultants that build things uh, out of their respective, pe uh, uh, respective pieces, uh, the Joomla community very much likes, I want to download A and it does what it's, it's supposed to do. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Joomla also has a very much a, a commercial friendly mindset. Uh, when we started out um, in, uh, Mambo started in 2001, uh, it, had, it, it was always friendly to the commercial developers. We, didn't, we, we never really had uh, the arguments about uh, we shouldn't be listing um, commercial stuff or anything like that. Well, we had a few fanatics, but you know, everybody, everybody does. Uh, but we've also always embraced the, and done things to help the, the, uh, the community groups. 
uh, to to help the commercial developers. Uh, one of the good things uh, about the Joomla structure is we have an independent non-profit at the head uh, which does not compete in the same sector as our community itself. Um, so they can make decisions for better or for worse but they're not, they don't have that conflict of interest of um, uh, uh, making decisions for the project that might affect their bottom line. There's no return on shareholders or anything like that. Finally, there's a ton of books and training, uh, which means that uh, you as a, a, an extensions developer uh, can just hand your client a book or tell them to go um, find other training material for the core stuff so that you ha only have to concentrate on um, the, the, the magic source that, that you're adding. Um, whereas if you're building a bespoke system all by yourself, you've got to, ha you've got to worry about the whole lot. What's the catch? Uh, you can't really do this on your own. Uh, you can't make, um, well you can, uh, but in my opinion you'd have, it, it takes a much bigger capital investment to uh, try and make it on your own as a, as a, as a new guy on the block in, in uh, particularly the GPL world or, or copy left world. Um, there's always the design danger of fanatics and extremists, as I said before, that don't think uh, there should be commercialism uh, in free open source software and um, sometimes they can um, write some pretty nasty things on blogs and Twitter and that, that sort of stuff, that, all that wonderful technology we've got these days. Uh, the best way to combat th them is to throw more support at the parent project that you're relying on. Um, Complacency is a big problem in, uh, in, our, um, in our sort of universe. Uh, you can't rest on your laurels. Because your source code's out there, uh, you, you can't really be competing on hidden features. Uh, you're competing on how good your service is, uh, how much you're thrilling your customers, um, and, and, and how good your, your software is. Um, you know, when, when people are comparing two pieces of software, they're going to be looking at reliability, they're going to be looking at how you respond to support, they're going to be looking at those sort of things. And um, uh, if you're complacent about that, you're going to fall down uh, very quickly. Uh, and last, but certainly not, me, not least, business is still business. Uh, a lot of people uh, come concerned to me, or came concerned to me, uh, that uh, when we tightened up the licensing restrictions on Joomla, that they were going to go out of business. And the first thing I asked them is, have you seen your accountant? And none of them have, uh, or very few of them had. Uh, you still need to be setting up your businesses to um, evade the tax man as much as po humanly po uh, legally possible uh, and that sort of thing. All of the good business practices still come into play um, and just because, uh, just because you're proprietary or copyleft uh, doesn't mean um, that you're, uh, you're immune to things, uh, immune to going down the tubes. Um, success stories. Uh, in Joomla we have quite a few uh, uh, ex individual extensions that have hit the million downloads club. Joomla has been downloaded uh, uh, 16, 17 million times, uh, including patches, okay. Um, but uh, several extensions themselves have, have reached uh, the million and multi-million million download club. Uh, tempo, we've got a large, large, large uh, industry, um, multi-million dollar industry in uh, themes. Uh, if you want to break into that, good luck at the moment. But we've got the rocket themes, U, the U themes, uh, Joomlarts, those sort of people being very, very successful and still using, uh, and using that combination copyleft and creative licensing. Uh, a few... Um, um, social networking success for is commercial, John Social, um, free and non-commercial community builder, both very strong projects uh, and doing well. And uh, we got a heap of dollar stores which have lots of things to, to for down, download and, and that sort of thing. Um, and um, yeah, so if you've never heard of Joomla before, there's a few of the links, the extension site, um, community news, uh, and social network and the obligatory unashamed plug for my blog. And um, that's a good place to stop and ask for questions.
short talk for the last one of the afternoon. <laughs> so maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to you talking, but I didn't quite understand what... So what is the business model for uh, the different people involved in this community? I mean, it, are they... I didn't quite get that out of the Okay, talk, you maybe. can't, uh, when you're dealing with a copyleft or the GPL license, um, you can't uh, have a model where you say, um, when you download my software, you can use that on as many sites as you want. I can't apply a restriction on how you use that. And not, not only that, I can't go after you legally, if, even if I say, uh, you're only permitted to use one copy on one site. Oh, that's all. We're, we're dealing with web software here. Uh, so the business models have to get around, uh, need to change from that, except for the templates. Uh, so your business model needs to uh, try and think about, well, how am I going to get that recurring income? H how am I going to get sales in the first place? And how am I going to get um, them to, to fork out more money? And uh, the way... Uh, you can do that is, is um, the most common way is a subscription basis. You sign up for a club and that's a, a, a membership fee or, or there's a, a, a sub support subscription um, and that's the way you try and get uh, your recurring in income. Now with the templates, as I said, it's a little bit different because you can apply a different licence on the artistic content uh, which means they can say, look, you're only licensed to um, do this on one site or um, two sites or you know you pay $250 and you can have any any number of sites so that sort of thing. Um, the, the key is when you do your su subscription base um, you've got to keep working at it all the time. You, th th this thing's like dough, you've, you've got to need it, you can't just set and forget and make your money and disappear because your customers will, will disappear as well. So, so essentially it's a red hat support subs subscription yeah, model. Yeah, very similar um, to Red Hat. Yeah, yeah, Red Hat's a, an obvious um, candidate for for um, for that sort of thing. It is also scary when you first do do it as well, and you see your software being put up on torrents and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day. Um, as I said, when the GPL wars came and, and a whole heap of group of developers went away, uh, what they found is they weren't allowed on the extensions directory and their traffic plummeted. They came back to the extensions directory and the number of times I've had uh, somebody say, you know, we were really nervous about coming back, we came back and we're, now I've got four, four times the, the traffic and four times the sales. So, you know. um, it seem, seems to me that the, the um, approaches that you're describing are kind of almost exactly like the same the, the kind of approaches that are used by companies that don't have GPL licensed software um, except that you're looking at charging lower margins basically because you you, you don't want to have such a big margin that you create an incentive to try to set up you know copycat type somebody could easily create uh, could create just a replacement extensions joomla.org and, and if they could develop a similar buzz around their brand, then, then they could usurp you know, everybody who's using yeah, extensions. Yeah, uh, good luck. And mm. if you do that, you've put a lot of work into it and, um, and you're probably due. Mm. Um, yeah, but... Uh, uh, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that um, kind of the issue of, of using that, that um, the proprietary selling model for open source software seems to be sort of a fairly marginal uh, opportunity. And um, I just contrast the approach that you described with, for example, what the Drupal community does, um, which has entirely GPL'd everything. There's no such thing as a theme or template store. There's no such thing as a module uh -huh. store. There's no such thing or extension store or any of that sort of thing. Where uh, I think the thing that the, the Drupal community has realized, and I should point out that my business makes its uh, entire income from um, developing Drupal sites or a lot of its income anyway. That's okay. Um, uh, I've cheated off some of your code. In <laughs> but the, the idea is that um, the idea is that that I think the Drupal community has, among others, um, recognized where the real value is in the in the in the actual process, and that is to actually um, provide the the ability to 
create exactly the right kind of capabilities that a particular customer needs in exactly the right place at the right time. And very little of that actually has to do with code. It has a lot more to do with how you put it together and yeah. the, the customer interaction and so on. And that's where the value actually lies. And you they, can actually charge a lot very, for that. very, very different cultures. Mm. Um, um, and, and certainly very different focuses. Um, uh, the, the Joomla community certainly goes for a shotgun approach, looking for a broader market, a lower price, price point to get that volume. And uh, quite honestly, you know, for me to download something for 50 bucks, I can't write it for that. I could write it myself, but you know, an extension probably costs $10,000 if you add up all of the you know, something reasonable. Uh, there's a lot of cost involved. So uh, the, the fear that I'm going to lose all my sales isn't grounded in, in, in reality in most of the, most of the time. Um, yeah, just to, um, I guess, to, bit to add on to that, because um, I actually used to be involved in Mambo and Joomla stuff and um, moved across to doing Drupal things. And um, I think that's... That's okay. <laughs> Um, but I think um, we pinched a couple back. <laughs> just to add on that, like, because when it comes to a business model, for me, my business model is the skill set that I have in my head. My business model is the years of experience that I have working with Linux, is the years of experience in business and et cetera, and all that that I bring to the customer, as we we're saying, rather than that code set. Um, is I mean, when it comes to like in, within the Joomla community now, because it's something I haven't been involved in in a while. Is it? I mean, are you are you not? Is there not a viable business model that go into a company and actually set up a customised solution using that, using Joomla, or is it money mainly made or setting those extensions? Um, it's, it's, mainly, it, it's mainly commodity based. Uh, my impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, of, of Drupal is it's, it's more a, I've got a toolkit and I'll craft this magnificent sculpture just for you. We don't see, we have those markets in, in Joomla, but they're very much pushed to the consulting end of the spectrum. Um, but most of our market comes, I, I want plug and play, and I want it to, want it to work. Yeah. So the, the other comment I'd um, make with, particularly with copyleft licensing, is it levels the playing field uh, a lot. Uh, you don't need to be particularly cashed up to play with the big guys. You just need to do to play well. Sorry, just to add on to the yep. end of that question, um, is there even an easy way for you to tell whether most of the money being made off Joomla is from your um, extensions and that sort of thing versus people selling services into corporations and businesses? There's no, there's no way I'd, I'd have any any sort of. Sorry, that's what I, that's what I would yeah. have figured. So it was a, um, it was a difficult. My question. gut, my gut feel is we our com, uh, commodity based, our widget based industry would be certainly a lot bigger than than Drupal's. Uh, our consulting industry would be probably less than than Drupal's. We're trying to change that. Any more questions? That's good. Iron Man by the end of this week. Um, this might be more of a comment. Uh, it, it does seem that you're, you're about the standard business things applying. Um, trust is just such a big thing in business. Trust, reputation. It kind of trumps everything. Like yeah. people aren't going to go if someone else creates another um, extensions dot you know other Joomla dot org. Or, you know people aren't going to go to that. That's yeah. So it's really about building, it seems to be about building a business where you're a respected, um, good to work with um, business. And at the end of the day, what type of software you're using. Yeah, your, your, your ability to break into the market is, is built on the brand trust of Joomla itself. And then you start developing your own. Um, like some people in the in the community have a name and have a reputation, and they might might be a little bit lucky in initially get launching off. Um, they might have a, a bit more luck, but at the end of the day, if they don't deliver, then <laughs> you're really shooting yourself in the foot <laughs> in a big way. So, as I said, the, it levels the playing field. Okay, thanks for your great questions and thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'd just like welcome. to give you a gift from Linux Australia. Thank, thank you for you. talking to this day. Thank you.